My name is David Bickle, and I don't in any way consider myself an expert or a scholar on things revolving around acceptance in today's Christian generation. In fact, I'm probably one of the least qualified to produce anything on this subject. I've just been hit with a lot throughout this last month that I want to share some thoughts on something that we tend to shy away from as Christians. I went out of my comfort zone and immersed myself in a community that I'm not very familiar with. Don't shut me off yet. Hopefully, you can pull something from this short feature on one of the most celebrated movements across America. Pride. I know I lost half of you as soon as I stated the subject, but bear with me. Recently, I've been burdened with the lack of positivity and love in our culture as Christians. It seemed like every time I met with someone who proclaimed Christ, including myself, I was hit with a brick wall of complaining, discontentment, and miserable attitudes. Nothing ever works the way they want it to, work sucks, they have no friends, why can't anything go the right way, woe is me, woe is me, you get the picture. On the contrary, the LGBT community doesn't give off that vibe in the least bit. I was struck with how accepting, kind, and forgiving the community is as a whole, something that I think the everyday Christian could honestly learn from. In the Old Testament, the Israelites held celebrations, parades, and feasts frequently to glorify God and how he was working to preserve his kingdom. Now, this was during a time when the church as a whole was being persecuted. In Exodus, the Lord even commanded his people, three times a year you shall keep a feast to me, and in Leviticus, you shall celebrate a feast to the Lord. Now, where did the feasting go, and why do we only hold celebrations on Easter and Christmas? Now, don't understand what I'm not saying. I understand that many churches have meals after service, get-togethers with people from their community, barbecues, picnics, all of that counts. But what part of that specifically celebrates the incredible lifestyle that God gives us through life in Him? Even though we as a nation only recognize one month as the official Pride Recognition Month, there are hundreds of events that celebrate the LGBT lifestyle each month throughout the world. We have Miami Beach Gay Pride, Jasper Pride, Digital Pride, Philadelphia Black Pride, Tokyo Rainbow Pride, or even Buffalo Pride Fest, just to name a few. And those are all in the month of April alone. That doesn't even include the 70 plus officially recognized celebrations in the LGBT Recognition Month alone. Our community will celebrate a birthday at the drop of a hat, but neglects to praise the one who gave us life in the first place. Yes, all these thoughts are stemming from LGBT and my observations during St. Louis Pride. I don't really know why I was hit with this or why it became so pressing, but I think that we can really take a step back and look at who we are as a Christian culture. We have a lot we can learn from the LGBT community. Now before I close this and everyone is confused, I'm not in any way, shape, or form endorsing pride, the background, roots of it, the lifestyle that it supports, but I do choose to love all members of the community with the same love as I love my church family. Love is not exclusive just to people who believe what you do. Jesus spent time with prostitutes and tax collectors and showed the same love that he did to his apostles. We as a church are commanded to love. Speak the truth in love. Be an example of God's love. If we had half the drive and the pride in our lifestyle as the LGBT community does in theirs, I believe the church would see an uprising that would take cities and turn them upside down. I pray that at least someone was able to learn something, relate to a comment, or understand the need to celebrate positivity and love in the Christian culture. It's time to wake up. It's time to live. It's time to love.